want to welcome you to On Par with the President. I'm excited today to sit down with track and field star uh, Javon Harrison, who at LSU helped win the team national title, six NCAA individual titles, owns four LSU school records, and most recently swept the long jump and high jump competitions at the United States Olympic trials to become the first man since Jim Thorpe in 1912 to compete in both events for Team USA. I'd like to give you a little background. On part with the president is focused on people at LSU who are hitting the green. I'm big into golf. You know, I can't run track anymore. And um, the big part about playing par golf is that you're at the very top of the game if you can play and be on par. And so the whole point of uh, this podcast is to talk to the very best people who are affiliated with LSU who are on par, um, really just really doing great things. We're going to tee off here with, with a couple of questions. T tell us, Javon, how did you first get into track and field and specifically the high jump and the long jump? The way I got into track and field was my family. My family's big, uh, big on track. My mom did track, my godmother, my aunts, uncles, everybody in my family did track. So track was just something that my family just, you just did it. Like it wasn't a question, you did it. You could do other sports, but you were gonna do track. As far as getting into high jump and long jump, that was a thing that came during high school. My high school, my high school coach, you know, I played basketball, he thought, okay, well, you can jump a little. You can jump a little bit. So let's let's see how you do in some jumping events, and that's how it started. He said you can jump a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure you were very very good at it. So when you first started, what, what did you run sprints or what did you do in track and field initially? I I dabbled in a little bit of everything, but in high school, I mainly focused on 110 hurdles, 300 hurdles, high jump and long jump. That makes sense. So how did you decide to come to LSU? What, what led you to that decision? Ultimately, it was just the coaching staff and the way they approached the whole process, how they would talk to my mom, my family, you know, they made it feel like I'd be welcome and it'd be a home environment and I'd be taken care of. So that was big for me. And also, you know, LSU is far enough away from home that my mom can't just pop up on me, but it is close enough that she can, you know what I'm saying, come anytime she needs to, so. I like that, I like that, it's a good decision. What's your favorite experiences, you know, attending LSU? Probably say it's going to the football games, going down, and like, especially during the 2019 season when we were winning every game, it was just a different atmosphere in Tiger Stadium. So Javon, after you tee off, and, and when you play golf, I don't know if you play golf, you get that first shot off, and then the next shot, you're trying to get to the green. You want to you wanna get up there because you want to score. It's all about scoring. So I want you to tell us a little bit about how did you get to where you are now? And more specifically, how did your experience as an LSU student contribute to your success? The way I got to where I'm at now was just really a lot of hard work on and off the track. A lot of practices that I did by myself where I came back after a regular practice just to try and sharpen up a few things. As far as school goes, school just kind of, it gave me, I guess, a way to get away from track. And, you know, my mom's very big on school, so I knew it was something that had to be done. So I really focused in on my schoolwork sometimes just to give me a mental break from track. You just qualified for the Tokyo Olympics. The Tokyo Olympics on our, our, the USA's team in two events, you, you talked about working by yourself and, and all the, and the, and, and the things required. Talk, talk a little about, a bit about what kind of discipline did you have to display in order to achieve what you did? It takes a lot of discipline, especially when you're doing two events that are, for lack of a better word, completely different. High jump and long jump are two, two events that don't really correlate so much as you would think. So it takes a lot to zone in on one, focus in on one, and then flip the switch, zone in, and focus in on another event. You, you talked about training your body for two different events. Help us understand what it would be like for you on a normal day where you were, you're navigating your school work and training for these two events. What, what does that look like? Help, I don't think a lot of people really fully understand what's required to do what you did. So, so just give us a typical day. If we're in school, I wake up. Normally I have, normally we, our academic advisors schedule our classes like in the morning. 
So that way we we can just go straight to practice and then go home and like unwind and have tutoring. So I'd wake up, brush my teeth, get ready for school. I'd make my way to campus. I'd be in campus, I'd go to my classes, whether it's two, maybe three classes for the day. I'll knock those out, then I'll probably get something to eat. I don't really eat breakfast too often. If I can, if I can grab something, I will. I'll get a lunch though after I'm done with all my classes. I'll probably have my clothes packed because by the time I finish class, I have to go straight to practice. So then I'll go straight to practice. I'll change into my, my workout clothes if I don't already have it on. Practice a run two and a half hours, maybe, maybe three, depending on what we have for the day. Then it's back home, shower, try to unwind a little bit, and then tutoring sessions for class. And then I get to come home and be done with school and everything. So what happened to your social life during that? Because you just described a really full day. Um, did, did you get a chance to do anything in, in the social realm here at LSU? I mean, I try to make time to do stuff socially to just kind of balance everything. But that, that happens more on the weekends than weekdays. If you were talking to a potential student athlete who's going to be in track and field, what's, what's a big lesson that you would, you would want to share with them right now about your, from your experience at LSU? Just really listen to the coaches. They know what they're talking about, even if it takes a while. That was something that I had to learn my freshman year because we changed pretty much everything about the way I did and approached the two events. And I got very frustrated in the beginning and I wasn't trusting the process. So to an incoming track athlete, I'd say just trust the process. It'll, it'll work out. The coaches know what they're doing. So you just got to trust what they're doing and just put all your effort into it and then it'll all pay off. So, so Javon, in golf, the, the thing you want to do is score. It's really important to score. Um, you know, breaking even is great. On par is, is what we're talking about. But that, that's 99 percentile. But you scored big. You, you know, you're a double ego person. You, you made it happen in such a way that's really special. When did you know um, you would be successful? At what point did, you, did, did, did it come to you and say, you know, I could, I could really do this and be really good at it? My sophomore year. My sophomore year where I won my first two NCAA titles outdoor, I would say that was the, the beginning. That was the, okay, you've won two national titles as a sophomore. You, your marks might not be super high, but they're high enough to a point where you, you were able to win. And, you know, you're starting to get a little bit of talk. So, you know, you just iron out some more things and then you can, you can really reach the, the higher level. So my sophomore year when I won my two national titles is where I was like, okay, I can really do this on a professional level if I keep going the way I am. So you're telling me when you were a high school athlete, it wasn't in your head at that point, well, hey, I could be great. I could be great at this. You, you didn't believe at that point? As a high schooler, you know, I did want to go pro. Like being a professional athlete was always a dream of mine. In high school, you know, it was the goal was to get to college. It was, it was, it's like, you know, you first step, get a, a full scholarship to college. Then once you get to college, it was like, okay, now that you're in college, try to win as much as you can and see where the marks take you and then ultimately try to go professional. So, you know, I tried to just take it one step at a time, but I definitely in high school thought about going pro. Did you have a moment when you realized you could make the Olympics in both events? I'd probably say it was indoor nationals. Like, I always told myself I could make it in both events, but indoor nationals where I went, I think it was seven, six and a half and 27, four, that was, that was the okay. Like, you're, you're ranked high, you're ranked in the top three in both events. So like, you know, you can do this. You just gotta go out there and perform the way you've been performing all season. Now, what year was that indoor nationals? That was this year. That was this year. So this year is the year you, you, you thought I could do this in both. Yes, sir. Had last year continued without COVID, I would have I would have felt the same way, especially because last year going into indoor nationals before it got canceled, I felt great. But we, you know, ultimately COVID happened and we had to shut down. So I say this year's indoor nationals just because I didn't have last year. You talked about I felt great. Help us understand that feeling, that emotion that you had when you when you qualified in the first event. And then how did it feel after you qualified in the second event? What, what was going through your mind? How did you really feel? Let us 
just have that moment with you just a second and, and, and let it all out here. Come on now, this is the LSU family. We want to really know. How did, how did that feel? I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really have too much time to celebrate. Like I did after they, they spaced everything out because they said it had got too hot. But I had to refocus in for my next event. Like I had to run, go get treatment, go get my body situated, make sure that I was feeling good and make my way back to the to the track to get ready for a lineup so we could get ready for a long jump. So like I was happy, I was smiling, I was in good spirits, my mom was there, you know, I got to hug her, see her, everything was great, but I had to refocus up for the next event. So I didn't really have too much time to celebrate till after I finished everything. Did you know that no one had uh, since Jim Thorpe had done this? Was that something was that a history you understood and knew about? Not until after I had finished competing. Well, you're like the modern day Jim Thorpe now. You know, in, in, in golf, when you get up on the green and it's time to putt, which is really the hardest thing, is the fine tuning, getting as close as you can to, to score. Somebody is standing up there oftentimes holding the flag, and they call it minding, mind, minding the flag. You know, you're, you're, and they ask you, do you want to keep it in or out? And, it's really an amazing time. It's, it's an important time. You're at that point now, and I'm, I'm just wondering, do you, do you have any time to think about if, if I win this, what do I want to do um, after the putt is in and I, and I score? What do you want to do after the Olympics are over? I want to relax my body. I want to go on a vacation. I want to go somewhere, kick my feet up, and just let my body relax. I have been competing since January in multiple events and my body is tired. Now you decided to go pro. Professional. You're a professional. What, what, what does that mean after you, after you uh, complete your rest and get your body healed again? What, what do you think you're going to be doing at that point? Once I'm rested and my body's good, we start fall training and conditioning Sometime I don't I don't remember what the exact schedule is because I'm not mistaking the pros and the college athletes start at different times, but it'll be right back to getting back to work, rebuilding muscle, you know, because obviously you know when you relax too long you start to build a little bit of fat, you know, ironing back out the body, making sure that technique and everything is coming together, and then we start back up the season for next year. So you've done this before at LSU. What did you learn at LSU that would help you with your transition right now to being a professional? The biggest thing I've learned is to just not overwork my body. Like, if my body hurts, listen. Like, I know a lot of athletes who try to push through pain and end up making things worse for themselves. So if, if it's one thing I've taken away from being at LSU is just how to work through doing two events and how to take care of myself in the best way possible. So that way I can perform as long as possible without injury. What do you want to accomplish in your professional career? Let's say over the next five years, what do you want to get done? Two Olympic gold medals. I, I want some world gold medals. The, I, I want to get the US high jump record and take a crack at the world record at some point too for both events. Outstanding. How do you envision yourself giving back to the community? You're going to be a professional now, and people will look to you to be a leader, not just in track and field, but, but beyond. What do you see yourself doing to, to add value in other re arenas? Really just donating to charities, helping, helping the younger kids out who have aspirations to come to LSU, talking to kids who are in high school, just stuff of that nature to help encourage people, let them know that hard work does pay off. What does your routine right now look like? I mean, how do you start your day and, and what do you do to get ready? Sleep. I sleep as much as I can. Uh, <laughs> I'll sleep. I'll probably sleep until 11, around 11, 12. Wake up, brush my teeth, get some food in my system before practice. Practice at about 2, then come home and relax some more <laughs> and play the game. That's, that's how it looks now. Your mom is has got to be your biggest fan. Tell me how your mother is dealing with you being in the Olympics and, and having this opportunity to win two gold medals. First off, I just want to say my brother, my, my brother is giving my mom some serious competition for my biggest fan. My mom is very excited. She started crying when I made it in both. Well, when I made it in one, she started crying. When I made it in both, it just it just overwhelmed her. 
But she definitely is very excited and very happy for me. And she can't stop telling me how proud of me she is. Does she have any advice for you right now? Keep my head on straight and don't let the fame and glory get to me. Great advice. T tell me this. T tell us about your brother. Is he also in track and field? He wants to be. He's still a little, he's still young, so he's he's still growing up, trying to figure out what sports he likes and all of that. But he definitely is looking at track as one of the sports that he wants to do. Well, he's got a great role model in in, in his big brother, so I know that that would be awesome if he did that. I don't know if there's anything you want to tell the uh, LSU community. Anything you want to say as you prepare to, to go over to Tokyo? Not really anything I want to say, but I want to thank the LSU community for all the, the love that they've given me since I've been at LSU and still continue to give me. I did have one other question I thought about. If I was a parent of somebody as, as special as you are, how, how is your mom and, and your family dealing with the fact that the Olympic Games are happening during the pandemic and there can't be any fans? Um, have, they, have they articulated any feeling about that? Any parent would be, a, would, be, would be hurt that they couldn't go and watch their kid compete in one of the biggest competitions in the world. But they're, they're, fig they're figuring it out. I'm sure they're going to figure out some way to get the family together to just watch the meet. And how are you going to mentally deal with the fact that there, you'll just be in a stadium and, and just going for it? Have you thought about that without the fans, without the cheering? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's a competition and you got to go out there and you just got to do you. So, I mean, the crowd is great to have. Trust and believe they really do make a difference. But you, you just got to focus in. They've given us plenty of time to know that there aren't going to be any fans. So it's really just up to the athletes to make it uh, as fun and as entertaining as possible. Well, I know your mother is going to be rooting for you. And I know that your brother is going to be rooting for you. But I want you to know one thing. The president of LSU is going to be screaming like crazy for you to get both of these gold medals. And I could not be more proud of you and what you have accomplished um, as, a, as an athlete uh, representing this country as an Olympian. I just want you to know that. And um, you're, you're my first on par with the president conversation because truly you represent um, the very 99 percentile, the very best of the best. And I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to talk to you. I'm glad you took time out of your day to chat with me. And I know you could be resting. We know you want to get your rest because we want you to go out there and be the very best that you can be. And, and thank you for representing LSU with such dignity and in a great way. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It was a pleasure to represent LSU. And thanks again for having me on your podcast. All right. You take care. Go get them. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs>